Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 6, lesson 2, determine number of solutions. After this lesson, you need to be able to use the slope-intercept form of lines in order to determine whether a system of equations has zero, one, or infinitely many solutions. First, pause and reflect. Compare and contrast the graph of a system of equations with one solution to the graph of a system of equations with no solution, include discussion about slopes and y-intercepts in your answer. See what you can remember from the last lesson. Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Let's learn. Systems of equations compare slopes and y-intercepts. You can determine the number of solutions of a system of equations by simply comparing their slopes and their y-intercepts. If they have the same slope, but different y-intercepts, they're gonna have parallel lines, which means you have no solution. So they started in two different places, your y-intercepts, but the rate of change was the same. They're never gonna get closer to each other. So they will never intersect. If you have the same slope and same y-intercept, that's when you get the same line, which means you have infinitely many solutions. So if you see the same slope in both, it's going to be one of those special cases with either no solution or infinite solutions. If you come across equations that have different slopes, they both produce the same result. So it doesn't matter if they have different y-intercepts or the same y-intercept. If you see different slopes, there is one solution their rates of change are not the same, so somewhere the two lines will intersect and you will get one solution. Example one, find the number of solutions. Determine if the system of equations has no solution, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions. We have y equals negative two x plus four and y equals three fourths x plus two. So first we gotta ask ourselves, are the slopes the same? If they are, it's one of those no solution or infinite. If they're different, automatically it's one solution. We will be able to solve for x and y. So I see in front of x here two different slopes. And they have two different y-intercepts. But the two different slopes mean they're going to intersect at one point. So this system would have one solution. Check your understanding. Does this system of equations have no solution, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This has one solution. Our slope here is three. The slope here is hidden in front of x at negative one. They are different slopes. I have one solution. Example two, find the number of solutions. Determine if the system of equation has no solution, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions. This time we're given y equals 2 thirds x plus 3, and 3y three equals 2x plus 15. If you're given problems and asked for the number of solutions, this is how they're usually written, where they're usually in different formats, and you need to change one into the other. So let's change the second one into slope-intercept form. The first one's already there. To do that, we just need to divide both sides by 3. Then I get y by itself. 2x divided by 3 just becomes 2 thirds x. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Now let's analyze the two equations. I see a slope of 2 thirds and again a slope of 2 thirds. These equations have the same slopes. Let's look at the other part. The equations have different y-intercepts. So it's going up the same. One starts at positive 5. Going up the same. One starts at positive 3. These are parallel lines. There is no solution to the system. Check your understanding. Does this system have no solution, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions? Analyze the equations to figure it out. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This one has no solution. If I add nine to both sides here, I end up with a slope intercept form, y equals negative two fifths x plus nine. This one has a y intercept of zero. Same slope, but different y-intercepts. They would be parallel lines. There's no solution. Example three, find the number of solutions. 
Determine if the system of equations has no solution, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions. We have y equals 3 fourths x, and 3x minus 4y equals 0. Again, we need to write both in slope-intercept form. The top one already is there, so let's get this bottom one. We can subtract 3x from both sides. Bring this down, we're left with negative 4y equals negative 3x. Divide both sides by negative 4 to simplify it. This gives me 1y, negative 3 divided by negative 4 becomes positive 3 fourths with the x. Now that we have them both in slope-intercept form, let's analyze them. I have the same slope, and neither of them show a y-intercept. They're both at 0, so they have the same y-intercepts. These lines are the exact same line, so one graph would be directly on top of the other. This system has infinitely many solutions. Check your understanding. Does the system have no solution, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This one has an infinite number of solutions. For the top one, if we add 8 to both sides to get it into slope-intercept form, y equals 2x plus 8. For the second one to get into slope-intercept form, I would need to divide both sides by 2. That gets y by itself. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 4 divided by 2 is 2 with the x. Then switch places of these. I end up with y equals. The switch of place gives me 2x plus 8 as well. Same exact equation both times. It was an infinite number of solutions, since this is the same line. Take time to pause and reflect. Look back and review examples 1 through 3. What are some steps you could take to determine how many solutions a system of equations has? Pause the video now, write down your thoughts. Example 4. Analyze systems of equations. A system of equations consists of two lines. One line passes through 0, 4, and 3, 2. The other line passes through 3, negative 3, and 9, negative 7. Determine whether the line through the first pair of points intersects the line through the second pair of points. And again, the intersection is going to tell us if there's a solution, so finding if they intersect would help us to tell if there would be a solution or not. So when we're given two points, to find the slope, we should use the slope formula, where we're just subtracting the coordinates. So the y values subtracted of the first part, we can do 2 minus 4. Since I did the second coordinate first, my x coordinates, I need to do 3 minus 0. When I simplify on the top, my y coordinates, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, 3 minus 0 is 3, so I end up with negative 2 thirds is my slope for the first two points. For the second two points, I can do the same thing. Let's subtract the y coordinates, so negative 7 minus negative 3, and then for my x coordinates, 9 minus 3. This gives us negative 4 over 6 which, if we simplify that fraction, we also get negative two-thirds. So, after our calculations, both lines have the same slope. Now, let's figure out the y-intercepts so we can determine if they're the same line or if they're parallel. In the first set of points, we know from previous lessons that the y-intercept is the value when x equals zero. In our first set of points, we are given a coordinate with x equals zero. So our y-intercept here would just be 4. For the other set of points, let's use our slope-intercept form. If we plug in our values, we can calculate out our y-intercept, which was b. So we can choose either set of points, and then we just figured out that the slope was 2 thirds, so we also are going to put that in. Our equation then, y equals mx plus b, m was negative 2 thirds. Let's put in a point, so 3 for x, negative 3 for y. Let's simplify it out, so negative two-thirds times three is negative two. Then we can add two to both sides to get b by itself. We get negative one. After doing this, we can see they have different y-intercepts. The first one was four, this one's negative one. Since the slopes were the same and the y-intercepts were different, these are parallel lines, so the lines would not intersect each other. 
And we could go farther and say that this would have no solution. Check your understanding. Read through the information given. Does the line through the first pair of points intersect the line through the second pair of points? Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should decide yes. As soon as you figure out the slopes, you can see they have different slopes, meaning they're going to intersect somewhere. If we figure out the slopes for the first one, I'm going to do 2 minus 6, and then 2 minus 0. So my y is divided by x. I get negative 4 over 2, which simplifies to negative 2. So the first set of points, my slope was negative 2. If I do the second part, 4 minus negative 8 on top, and 3 minus negative 1 on the bottom for my x change, 4 minus negative 8 is 12, 3 minus negative 1 is 4, 12 divided by 4 is 3. They have different slopes, they're going to intersect somewhere, a negative 2 slope would be going down, a positive 3 slope would be going up, somewhere they're going to intersect.